morning everybody so uh, as you can see this is the um, canvas from yesterday um, I'm going to be putting one creature in uh, today and um, I'm doing my ink blot creatures or one in this case I'm going to start off with this one here so I put an uh, ink blot on there yesterday so basically you're putting Indian ink down with a straw blowing it uh, so it creates these strange patterns and then I'm going to create a little um, little creature so just to zoom in a bit so um, I'm sure everybody here will see a million different creatures in that um, and what I'm going to be doing over the next few um, well probably probably an hour I would imagine um, so I'm going to create an eye and I'm going to start creating a creature and that's my first one for the uh, quarantine isolation workshop a one a day workshop Right, so got my little creature shape here. Um, I'm going to first create an eye, uh, and that will just create the rest of it. Um, it will, the rest will evolve from the eye. So um, my thoughts are that, that the eye is here. So I'm going to create a quite a large eye. And um, the colours I'm using at the moment are just titanium white, uh, Van Dyke brown and Payne's Grey and so it's just about keeping uh, this, this um, roundness of the eye at the moment so just keep uh, and I'll do a couple of layers of this and so you have to excuse the hairdryer coming in so do that second layer um, you kind of tend to with the, with the black I quite like the black underneath it, it does tend to give it some sort of texture and um, kind of I don't know what it's just a real strange uh, effect it gives um, under, under other colors um, so um, and that's all well and good when you're doing colors on, on, the, on the body and things like uh, say fur or scales or whatever or just patterns um, but the eye really needs to be um, quite a solid color uh, initially so that's why I'm using a hairdryer and I'm going to have to do another layer of white after that as well. and um, I had a request of, to show brushes which I did in the first video this is just a number two it's a standard number two, quite a long um, bristle brush, but I quite it's my go-to brush really for doing details. Um, if I'm going super fine, then I'd have this one, which is about five zeros, I think it is, um, which is yeah five zeros, um, a tiny, tiny, tiny brush, um, but that's only super details. Whereas this one here is a really good all-round brush. You can get a good um, point to the tip, and that will help with details anyway. And I don't want to go too detailed on this one. I just want to um, have a little bit of stuff happening. I haven't really thought about what, it, what I want to do. It's obviously going to be an undersea creature of some sort. Um, but we'll work out what that will be like in a second. So that's the basic um, body of the eye that I'm now. So what I'm going to do is kind of create some tones in there. Uh, now it's an eyeball, so therefore it's going to have um, a shape to it, like a spherical shape to it. But it's a it's going to have a clear lens on it, so that lens is like glass, and you're going to get a shadow, and then you're going to get a highlight. So what's hap what happens? Light goes through the eyeball. Uh, and it catches on the bottom and I'm assuming light's coming from this sort of angle here so I'm going to have a little bit of um, burnt umber and Payne's grey well it's not burnt umber, it's Van Dyke brown I will constantly refer to it as burnt umber but it's not and that seems quite dark at the moment and that's fine because I'm going to just tone it down so there's going to be a shadow under the top eyelid or created by the top eyelid
and that shadow kind of comes down and it fades as it gets to the middle. So I'm adding a bit of white to it, a bit more white. You notice how I constantly go back to the newspaper to take paint off my brush. I'm constantly con controlling what is on the brush. It's really important. There's nothing worse than getting to the most high detail part and then a blob of paint going clunk onto your um, painting. So always control what's in your brush. Water here should be over here. Keeping it clean again. So I'm going to do another layer of, over that. I might even add another colour just to kind of lift it a bit because it's a bit, little bit dull. So the light's coming through the eyeball but it's bouncing on the bottom of the eye so this is going to stay light under here. And I'm just going to add a little bit of burnt umber. So this, that seems like a lot but it will be alright. So it's all about coming back and forth, adjusting your tone and your colour to make until it's right, basically. So not too bad. There's a little bit of streaking happening on that. Um, I don't like the streaking. I like it quite smooth. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water to my brush, just to thin that acrylic out a bit and make it move around a bit more. Again, that humming in the background is my fan heater because it is a little bit cold in here. Um, I'll turn that off because what I think is happening is um, it might, the movement of the air is drying out the paints a bit quickly. I will come back and tidy the edge of this, uh, the um, eyeball up in a little bit. Tidy the edge of that with a bit of Payne's Grey. Okay, with that one, just give it a blast and a bit of glaze medium left from yesterday so I'm just going to pick up a little bit of this colour here with the glaze medium to thin it down a bit and then just bring that over a bit more in that way and that just creates a little bit more um, depth to the eyeball and a little bit of white underneath so that gives you the highlight um, so I'm going to have this eyeball or this character looking up and over that way because it will create some sort of movement so I'm going to put my pupil in there and the fun bit which is um, brings it to life is the, the white highlight so when the light goes through that hits the top of the eyeball and it then comes through to the bottom it creates a point of light on the top So it's just a white light, like that, and that suddenly makes it very 3D. I'll just put a little bit more down here. So 
So what I will do now is I will stop this video and then I will go to a time lapse photography uh, uh, video uh, to see me doing the um, the whole thing. Um, and then it's not going to take so much time up, um, so you're, you're simply watching me do this for an hour or so. Thank you.